Joining me now to discuss Brett Tolman, right on crime executive director and former U.S. attorney. Uh, the guy out in uh, out west, he at 17, his name is Kyle Hedquist. He was convicted of murder in the death of a 19-year-old girl, and he's now out when he was serving a life sentence. Brett, you can't make up this. You know, the governor should know at the at the very least if you're going to exercise that incredible power that we grant them, the, the power to grant clemency, that one of the first things you do is consult with the victim of the crime. Um, here, it's outrageous that the governor didn't reach out to and have discussions with the family of, of the victim of this crime, which was a horrific execution style shooting. Um, and, and it should be the first thing that they do uh, in this particular case. And now we, we know very little about what the calculation was that went into the governor's decision to grant clemency. Well, we know that the Douglas County District Attorney sent a letter to uh, Kate Brown's office, the governor's office, objecting to this killer's release, saying the killer is uninterested in having his version of events be based in reality. And there, there were additional DA, additional DA and sheriff whose county includes the town where this killer, this criminal murderer, uh, will be residing, and they've issued a public safety notice and when they expressed significant safety concerns about the sudden and ill-planned commutation from this governor. So I, I, it goes to the thinking of these liberals, and I've said it all along, they coddle criminals, murderers even, and treat the victims and their grieving families like something to be discarded, like detritus. That's right. And the criminal justice system, it's OK to want to change certain aspects of it. We all should be. But I, I hope conservatives are the ones that are going to lead that fight because they're the ones that won't forget about victims of crime. And they're also the ones that recognize there really are some bad, evil people in this in this world. And sometimes they should not be getting out of prison. And, and we should be very careful when we're going to exercise clemency when it's a crime of violence that is the underlying crime. You'll notice, Stegan, that a lot of governors that grapple with this, they're, they're dealing with, um, you know, issues of, of actual innocence. They're dealing with nonviolent crimes. Even President Biden just recently, all of his clemencies were nonviolent offenders right. that he granted. And so I think it's something that the left has shown they're willing to do, and that is do, you know, react based on emotion rather than research, data, and thoughtfulness. And, and that's part of the problem that you've seen with bail reform or getting rid of cash bail is when people are picked up for even violent crimes. And I call somebody who's attacked on a subway or punched in the face in the street. That's violence. If someone has to go to an emergency room or a hospital for an attack, that's violence. And these are people based on the, the crimes that are not being held on any bail whatsoever. And then you wonder... If there's no punishment with the crime, that why crime is soaring, say, in New York City. I watch the crime stats uh, every, you know, every week that they come out. The only crime that's actually down here to date is murder. But you have double-digit increases in rape, robbery, felony assault, burglary. You name it, and it's going up. The most important analysis when you're bringing a case after you've charged the, the, the defendant is are they a risk, a, a danger to the safety of the community? And if they are, they need to be held. New York thought they would be clever, thought they would pass bail reform that really wasn't any su such reform. It was just simply let them out and not hold anybody pre-trial. That's a mistake, and we've seen it over and over again from the driver who drives into the parade to others that are violent, who, you know, homicides of police officers in, in Texas. We see it day in and day out. And I'm asking those politicians to take a thoughtful analysis when they change the criminal justice system and do it in a way that doesn't compromise public safety. Brett Tolman, thank you so much for being here. Always great to see Thanks you. Thanks, Dagan.